for executive director. I guess I can say that, right? I can say that? Can I say that? All right. Um, amen. So c c keep coming with the question and answers uh, portion. We're going to have Sister Courtney Underwood come forth. Um, she can talk about getting social with your ministry. I, I referenced her earlier how she does a lot of our social media stuff, and she's very punctual and very, very technical with it. So I'm really looking forward to what she has to share uh, on, it to, on it right now. Amen. 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 All right, they're bringing my slides up. So I am a talker. I want this to be interactive, so I'll be asking you some questions as we get started. I got my clicker here, so you'll be able to pay attention to the slides and also reference the materials in your binder. So to introduce myself, I am Sister Courtney Underwood here at Better Life Faith Church International. I have over 20 years of experience in human resources and communications with a focus on leadership development, um, building healthy teams, maintaining those teams. I actually have a, a consulting firm where I serve entrepreneurs, business owners, nonprofits, and churches. But more than that, I am over marketing and communications here at Better Life. So I've been a member here for 11 years, and I manage our digital footprint, so that's our website, our Facebook page, our Instagram page, and all of those digital assets, including the binders in front of you, as well as the slides themselves. So when it comes to really getting the word out, everything we do is by faith. So we have a scripture foundation um, in marketing and communication, and that's actually Romans 10 and 15. And that says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So a lot of times when um, churches think of marketing, it's just like a sleazy car sales, you know, um, but it's really about bringing awareness. It's really about winning souls. And so it's imperative that we win them and meet them where they are in, in today's society that happens to be on live. So as we bring our slides up, we'll get right into the presentation itself because I do have some data, you know, everything we do is um, in order. And so we'll get right into the first slide. Here we go. Oh, we All right, here we go. Okay, so meeting people where they are. So we have four important statistics that I want to make you aware of. And the first one is 85% of new visitors research the church online before they visit. That means that they are getting an impression of your ministry, who you are, what you believe, before they even walk in the door. And whatever that presence is online can absolutely influence whether they make the decision to come. So you really need to be mindful of that. So whether it's looking up the address on Google Maps, whether it's checking out your Facebook page, whether it's looking on YouTube to see if there's experts um, of you sharing the word of God, they are doing research before they even come. So it's very important to know that because it can absolutely influence whether they actually show up. The second one, 27. That is the number of hours per week that people spend online. 27. Um, that number has actually increased in light of COVID-19, so these are very recent numbers. And so when you do the math, because again, I get it, that means that there are 168 hours in a week, right? 24 hours, seven days a week. If you give people mm, maybe seven hours to sleep per night, you know, just on average, I know they say you're supposed to get eight, but let's do seven, right? <laughs> that means that there's 119 awake hours left. 27 of those hours are spent online. So that's almost a quarter of the time being awake that you're spending online. And so when you think about meeting people where they are, they spend a quarter of the week. That means a quarter of their life, you know, if you extrapolate that, online, on the internet. So we want to make sure that when they're uh, consuming material, that we're feeding their eyes, that we're feeding their ears. So it's very, very important to have an online presence. The next statistic, 62% of churches connect with new members via social media. 
So what does that look like? That's either you streaming online, that's engaging people. Social media has absolutely skyrocketed in the wake of COVID. So if it wasn't a priority for your ministry prior, in today's society, that concern has absolutely manifested. And the last statistic, which is 68% of churches are now holding service online since COVID-19. So if you didn't have an online presence before, maybe you said, you know, there's a way that I need to reach the sheep. I'm going to start streaming. I'm going to start going live, whether it's from my home, whether it's from my office, whether it's from the church itself. A lot of ministries have made the decision to invest in their online footprint. And it's very, very important that we remain part of that narrative. The body of Christ should be at the forefront of movements like this. We should not be trailing behind. When you think about all of the material that the world is putting out there, we want to make sure that we are combating those voices with the word of God, with the actual truth. When you think about how many people are lost, how many people are broken, how many people are grieving, we want to make sure that we have um, the voice of God, the actual answer, the truth, in order to combat that narrative. So this is an interactive part because I always like to make the distinction between marketing versus branding. So those of you that attended last year, I did a lot of focus on marketing, but you need to also focus on branding. So we're gonna talk about the differences between the two. Um, the classic example is Walmart versus Target. Okay, so on the surface, these are similar stores. Department stores, you sell a variety of materials, you can get groceries, you can get home goods, you can get um, a variety of things. But anyone that's patronized both of those businesses knows that there's a distinct difference. So um, for audience participation, I would love to hear what's the first thing you think of when you hear Walmart? No wrong answer. Cheap, yes, yes, cheap, that is a great one. And what about Target? What do you think of when you hear Target? Expensive, okay, what else? No wrong answer. Okay. Better quality, okay. All right, and so when you think about these stores, there is a distinct difference because each of them have committed to different strategies when it comes to getting new people in the door. Walmart has said, we are going to compete on price. We will be the lowest cost, we will have great relationships with great relationships with our suppliers and vendors and to bring people in the door by competing on price. Target made the realization that, wait a minute, we can't compete on price, otherwise it's a race to the bottom, right? You can only get so cheap before you cut into your actual profits. So they changed their strategy years ago because a lot of people don't remember. Target used to kind of feel like Kmart, you know, it definitely felt like um, Woolworths, like it wasn't like the experience that it is now. It's definitely giving a little gold blast, right? Um, and so Target changed their strategy. They said, we're going to compete on experience, the customer experience, and that is how we're going to get people in the door. So they redesigned their stores. They made the aisles wider. They changed the store displays to give it a more boutique feel. They started calling their workers team members. They started calling their customers guests. And um, they actually did all of this with the intention to compete on experience. And that has absolutely reflected in their profits because both of the businesses are profitable, right? Um, Walmart absolutely dominates whatever market that it's in. And Target profits keep growing year over year over year. And so how does that influence the customer? How does that influence their behavior? Now going to Walmart, you know, people change the narrative, right? They say, oh, you gotta go to Walmart, right? It sounds like a chore. Versus, you know what, I'm just gonna hop in with Target. You know, I'm just gonna, just gonna browse. I'm just gonna linger, right? So the experience is different. And that's how these two stores are still profitable, but they're definitely different. And that shows up. So what does this have to do with ministry, right? We have to connect the dots. So when you think about marketing versus branding, Marketing is what you do, but branding is who you are. And that's absolutely reflected in how people feel when it comes to the ministry. Minister Stephanie just talked about being an ambassador. You know, Elder Southwell talked about, you know, talking and thinking like our man of God. 
so we have to think about branding, about being who you are, and marketing is what you do. So we're actually going to talk about both today. All right, so. Okay, so branding is who you are. Branding is who you are. So when you think about marketing and you know, connecting with people online, it's very, very important that the online experience mimics the in-person experience, right? There should absolutely be some continuity there, right? You can't have a presence online that's being you know, youthful and welcoming and engaging. And when you get here, everybody has an attitude. It's dark, it's dusty. People are just going through the motions for service to be over with, right? And that is definitely a gap. You know, so people can experience like, yeah, you know, I want to show up. I want to connect with them. They're online. They're cheerful. They're friendly. You know, I feel like they understand me. They have answers to the questions that I'm seeking. But then when you get here, there's a disconnect. You know, people aren't greeting me. I feel like socially awkward. No one even said hello to me. I didn't even feel acknowledged when I was there. Branding is who you are. So for all practical purposes, I can absolutely tell you how to build a website. I can tell you how to grow your Facebook audience. I can tell you how to, how to have a presence on Instagram. But my first question to you is going to be, who are you? Who are you? And that is important because as our apostle said, when he opened today, you know, you can have the smoke and the lights and the hip hop and people wearing sh shorts and being trendy. But at the end of the day, people want experience. People want answers. People want meat, right? And so you have to be able to stand in who you are and not lean into trends, not lean into what's popular. You have to know your voice. You have have to stand in what God told you to tell the people, right? Because he gave, <laughs> amen, he absolutely gave it to you for the people. So you can't lean into what's popular or what's trendy. And so that absolutely has to reflect online and in person, because again, there should be a connection and continuity. So branding, who you are, what makes a brand, right? Language, you know, are you saying the same thing as your leader? You know, is your behavior the same as your leader? Um, you know, when you think about examples of language, there's a lot of better life sayings that, you know, I could reference, you know, like Pastor Laura telling you, you are not that special, right? <laughs> or, um, you know, saying, uh, you know, our scripture, Mark 9 and 23, you know, if thou canst be believe, every single member of Better Life can absolutely finish that out, right? So as you think about language, what are you saying? What does that look like? That is branding. Behaviors, you know, there's a running joke for Better Life members. We're visiting your church. We're just the last to leave. You just, we're going to be the last to leave. We will close it out. And that is a reflection of our leader. We're not that in and out, you know, let me put the finger up and tiptoe out ministry. So that's a behavior. That's culture. That's the experience. You know, beliefs. You know, we are a faith-based ministry, and that absolutely reflects in everything we do. You know, the, the environment, environment matters because think about it. Um, Better Life West looks like Better Life South. So when we think about environment, there is absolutely power in cultivating a healthy, welcoming environment. All of these things make a brand because the last thing you want is for some Someone to visit your ministry. You give a powerful word that changed their life, and they don't come back because they're cold. They don't come back because um, you know of something trivial like that. So environment environment absolutely matters. And then when you think about values, what do you value? You know, what is your church saying to the people? These are all things that make up a brand. So again, marketing is what you do, but branding is absolutely who you are. Are. So as you think about, okay, you know, I want to get online, I want to talk to the people, I want to connect with people, you have to ask yourself, what do I have to say? You know, because a lot of times, um, you know, leaders will get on there, you know, they'll share a word, and then they'll disappear for about two weeks, a month, three weeks. And, um, so you leave the people wanting more, and you follow up, and they're like, well, you know, I said what I had to say, so that was it. But they want that um, continually relationship, they want that relationship. Um, so 
a lot of times when I'm working, um, you know, with uh, marketing and social media, the goal is absolutely to be consistent. People want to hear from you, and they want to hear from you often. So if you pop in and pop out, you know, and just leave the people wanting more, then it's absolutely going to lead to a disconnection. So as you think about, well, what do I say? Um, it, we'll give some examples here, but you have to know who you are first before you can begin um, to lean into that message. And so now we'll talk about the actual marketing aspect of it. Let's see, get to the next slide, come on. Here we go. So marketing is what you do. So when you're thinking about what to do online, these examples are all considered touch points or call to action, right? So if you're engaging online, of course you can share your message and we'll talk about ways to repurpose that. But you can ask questions, you know, um, and get people to engage and connect with you that way. You can share inspiration and then ask them to share it uh, with someone who needs to hear a good word. Um, you can offer prayer. You can share confessions, you know, from your your ministry. You can give them the opportunity to sow. These are all action items. These are all touch points um, because the goal is not for them to passively consume everything you have to say and then go about their day. You want them to connect. You want to know who they are and in order to do that you have to have these action items for them to do. And so when you think about marketing elements, you know, we can definitely talk about what you need to have an online presence. Now we've covered the voice, right? We've covered the brand, who you are. So now let's talk about the actual online presence. So there are four things that I recommend that you have. And again, these are a reference in the binder. But the first is a website. And the reason that it's important to have a website is because that is yours to own. I also recommend having a Facebook page and a Google page, but guess what? Facebook Facebook owns your Facebook page. Google owns your Google page. You own your website. You can absolutely control your website. I've worked with um, a lot of uh, different companies and they just lean on Facebook. Like, oh, we got a Facebook page. We don't need a website. But then Facebook changes their policies. They, changes the, they change the formula. So the next thing you know, you're being hidden on other people's pages. You don't have as many eyes because guess what? I always say, if something's free online, that that means that you are the product, right? So that's how Facebook makes its money um, from advertising revenue. So if you're, you know, pouring out your heart for free, Facebook is like, well, we're not profiting off of that. What motivation do we have to really promote your message when you're not paying us, right? So um, yes, Facebook is a great resource to have, especially if you're just getting started, but it shouldn't be all that you lean on. Because if you have your own website, you get to control that. You get to control how it shared, what's posted there, and that ownership is absolutely essential. Because I've also worked with companies where Facebook just up and de deleted their page. No rhyme or reason. And do you think you can call 1-800-Facebook and get somebody on the phone and say, well, what happened to my page? Or I think I was hacked. Or this isn't even me. Um, no, no, they're a giant corporation and they have a chat box at best, right, that goes to a call center, which goes to another call center. So um, once it's gone, it's probably gone, right? So when you think about having a website, that's something that you own. And then the last is the email address. Many of you have it already. Please do not use your personal email address as a line of contact. Um, amen. Yeah, we don't want to share your personal information because um, as was the theme of many of our speakers today, you don't want people to reach out to you directly. You should have a team that handles those messages and concerns and routes them accordingly. So you should have an email address. So these are the four elements that you absolutely should have for online presence. So now we'll talk about the market marketing elements, which is what everybody thinks about when they hear marketing for the first time. So the first, yes, a logo. Um, you should have a logo, you should have brand colors, and why do those things matter? Um, because there's uh, things such as uh, color theory, right? So if you go back to Walmart and Target, Walmart chose blue for stability. Like, that's what that represents, dependability, right? You know, they're competing on price, so that blue is very intentional. And then they chose a hint of yellow to represent joy. So even though you think low prices when you think Walmart, um, that color theory was very intentional. Target 
They chose red for excitement and youth and momentum. Um, and there's you know lots of theories about that, but that's why you'll see Target red all throughout the store, right? You know, it builds that excitement and momentum. That's why a lot of restaurants have you know red and yellow and things like that because those colors actually stimulate the mind and make you hungrier. So um, if you want to lose weight, you should probably dine out. Amen. Amen. And take it to go. Take it to go because uh, as you're sitting in there, the more you order. And so um, the next thing is voice. Your voice absolutely matters. So when I think about the type of content that I post online for a better life, um, it represents who we are in person. That means that I'm not uh, sharing jokes, that I'm not posting TikToks, that I'm not posting, you know, things like that. I am sharing who we actually are in person. I'm not chasing trends. I'm not chasing hashtags and, you know, like all of these popular things. I'm being authentic. And that authenticity absolutely translates to the in-person experience. So it's absolutely essential that you know your voice. Um, and then pictures. You want to absolutely share what the um, experience should look like. You know, you shouldn't have pictures of, you know, this uh, warehouse, like this mega church, and then you come and you're like, where are those people? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't see any of that, right? So there shouldn't be a big gap between the pictures you post online and who you are in person. Because again, it's about sharing your art your authentic self, you know, not your aspirational self, right? So there's absolutely a difference in the two. And so this is one of the last slides that I have. This is something that I always um, emphasize whenever I share it because it is about working smarter. The process of posting online can feel intimidating, right? You're like, I gotta post every day. I gotta talk to the people every day. I don't talk to people I know every day. Like, why do I have to do all of that? And so if you you think about one video, one message, one stream, you absolutely can use that one piece of content in several different ways. Um, so you can take five to ten quotes or nuggets from that message and then post them as a quote. You can uh, shorten some video clips and take two to three minutes at a time and post those. You can take the audio from that video and make a podcast. You can put that same video on YouTube and then you can transcribe some of that video and put it in an email newsletter. And so when you think about what it takes to actually have an online presence, it doesn't necessarily mean more work. It means being efficient and resourceful with the message that God has already given you. So it doesn't mean that you have to just keep cranking out material and keep doing things. It means that you are staying connected and doing it um, with the best use of your time. And so the last thing I want to call attention to is the resource Resources. In your binder, you know, there's an assessment on what it takes to build your brand. I absolutely uh, would love you to, you know, take that and reflect on that because it asks key questions. You know, like, what does your church do better than anyone else? You know, who are you called to reach? Where will your, your church be in five to ten years? Like, these are all essential questions that can lean into your brand, you know, as you're discovering um, your message or uh, establishing or even re-establishing, right? You know, because um, who you are today may not be who you are tomorrow. You want to make sure that you're being obedient to all that God has called you to do. So your message and your branding may evolve over time, and that's okay. The next is a resource on choosing a website platform. You know, I am pro website, so I have some resources there. Um, the next is strategic website creation. You know, just the bare minimum that you should have. You know, um, when is service? How do people find you? Um, you know, who are the pastors? You know, very uh, about five to six pages of content, so you don't think you have to, you know, write a dissertation. Um, and then ways to engage your audience online. So with that said, that concludes my presentation presentation, and I'll ask uh, Shidi Osuji to come back up. So thank you. Thank you, Courtney. That was a Fortune 500 presentation, huh, wasn't it? Amen. All right. Well, uh, our next speaker.